In this episode of tech video, I will show you how to make your window 11 significantly faster. As you can see here the before and after result. We will be going through each and every one setting by disabling all the unnecessary feature and telemetry features and services to really make the most of it. So I think we should get to the video then. Tip number one, disabling all the necessary features of Windows 11. Now Windows by default come here with a lot of bloatwares and a lot of features that is by default turn out which really hinder your performance. So what you would do here is trying to disable all of them. So right click here and then go to personalize and then what you wanna do here is go to system. And system what we can do here is go to the notifications and turn off this. Now mine is by default turn on what you would do here is disable it now if you're using notification i personally don't use it because i find it a lot of annoying so that's how you would want to do it. just simply disable it the other thing you can do here is if you go to system again and then go to the focus mode what you want to do here is uncheck all of them now mine is by default uncheck so you just simply uncheck all of them and then go to system now again go to system and then screw all the way here go to power and battery. Now by default it is set to efficiency mode since I am using here a laptop as you can see here from the charger icon. If you are using desktop set this to best performance but if you are using laptop then set it to best power efficiency for battery reason. Now again go to system and then scroll all the way here then go to multitasking. Now if you are doing multitasking by default then you don't know how to disable this but if you are not doing it i personally don't do it on this machine so what i would do here is simply disable it if it is enabled it always kind of snap the layout to this and kind of for the uh, multitasking here so let's try to disable it again go here all the way here go to the optional features now here you would get rid of some of the features which personally i don't use it most of them aside from the notepad so what you would do here is get rid of them now if you're using any of those you don't have to uninstall it but for performance reason i kind of get rid of most of them aside from the notepad but uh, as you can see here what you would do here is simply expand this and then click on uninstall it's gonna take a few seconds to uninstall and wait for it and that's it now you can go ahead to the print management and then uninstall it i personally use notepad so I won't get rid of it, but the rest of the thing, I will just simply speed up the process to save your time. Now that is done with it. Now what we can do again is go to the Bluetooth and device setting. When you install Windows by default, this Bluetooth will turn on because for some reason, but if you don't want to use it, just simply disable it. Now then what you want to do here is go to printer and scanners and then get rid of the fix if you're not using it of course just simply remove it go back to the bluetooth and device and then go all the way here to the pen and windows ink and then simply expand it and disable this too now we can go to the autoplay and then disable this too and then again we can go to the usb we can disable this too now again go to the personalization because this is where we would be importantly doing a lot of tricks in order to boost the system. Now go to the background and then set this to picture or if you would want to you can keep it to solid color as well but I just just in case if you want. And the other thing you can do here is if you go back go to the colors. When you install a clean windows by default this would be turned on which is really a kind of a performance hack for low end system. Now if it is enabled by default, what you want to do here is simply disable it. Now then what you want to do here is go to personalization again and then go to the dynamic lights. Disable this too. If you are not having a gaming PC and all the necessary RGB lights, you don't need the setting. Now again go back all the way here to the lock screen and then simply just uncheck this as well if it hasn't been checked. You can then go to lock screen status, go to none. And also if you would like to set this again back to picture if it is from Windows Spotlight. Then again go to personalization and then go to device usage. Now for 
if any of those settings is enabled, feel free to disable it. Anyway, we can go back to the app settings and then go to uninstall apps. Now, as I mentioned in the beginning, Windows comes with a lot of bloatwares and a lot of apps that you wouldn't want to use it ever. So let's get rid of one by one of them, the one that we don't need it. Like I don't use alarm and clock, so what I would do here, click on this three dot menu, click on uninstall. The same goes here for the clipchamp video editor and then simply uninstall it. Now I'm gonna speed up the process to save your time, but feel free to get rid of the application that you don't need it. Once you're done with the uninstalling application, what you want to do here is go to the gaming section. In a game bar, we can disable this and then we can go back to the capture and um, disable this tool. Also disable the game mode and then we can go here to the privacy and security section. Now go to the general and disable all the necessary settings. Now, when you inst clean install Windows, this would be by default turn on. So what do you want to do here? Disable all of them. Then go back to the speech section and disable this too. Now we can go to the inking and typing personalization, which we already disabled it. But if it's turned on, you can disable this too. Now go all the way here to diagnostic and disable this too if it is turned on. Now go to the view diagnostic setting. Now you can just disable all of them. Now if you see here delete diagnostic data, just simply delete it. And then go to privacy and security again. Then go to the activity history and then simply uncheck this too. Now when you scroll all the way here, you would see here this location. What you want to do here is go to app permission and location and disable this too. Now personally, of course, you wouldn't want to give your location to any of the application that you don't trust them. The other thing is that if you're using camera, then you would definitely want to just keep it on as it is. Like I don't use it on this PC camera often, so I would disable it. And the same goes here for the um, notification. I use microphone and voice activation. Let's go to the voice activation. If you go there, um, let's, let's disable this too. And then if I go here all the way again and then go to the notification section, I can disable this too because I don't use the notification as I mentioned in the beginning is really resource hugging but if you need it of course you can then leave it as it is. Now the same goes for the account info you can just disable it if you are sure what you are doing like I just got rid of it to make the performance a lot faster. Now we can then continue for the rest of the thing here just remove the permission of it. Anyway, go to the Windows Update and then simply go to the Advanced option and then go to the Delivery Optimization and simply uncheck this too. Now we are pretty much done here with the first tip by the way. I want to show you one important thing. If you right click here and then go to the Taskbar setting and then go to the just disable the Copilot. I don't use it and also Task View which I don't use it either and the Widgets here which is this one it's a little annoying and um, the search box which is for some reason look like that i don't often use it like if i hide it i can search her my application from the search menu as well so it's not a big deal and uh, if you go to the um, other systems icon you can disable this but i wouldn't want to recommend this because you probably might be using this and if you go to the task behavior, we can disable this too for performance reason. And uh, that's all I have to show you for the tip one. Tip number two, disabling startup application. Now, if you right click here on the taskbar and go to task manager, 
and then go to let's expand this by clicking on this hamburger icon and then go to startup apps now by default if you haven't disabled any of those it would be enabled which really kind of hug your system while the system is turning on and also taking memory significantly for no reason at all so what do you want to do here if you don't need them while the windows is starting up you just simply disable them like i don't need this bows sv64 i mean it is a sound driver by the way but it doesn't have to turn on the service like sound driver would be working anyway so the other thing is the security setting i don't use it often like so i just simply want to disable this too now uh, microsoft edge uh, by default turn on which is fine with me but if you don't like it any of those things that you don't want to just simply right click and disable them that way it will really make your performance tip number three disabling windows defender now i wouldn't recommend to disable windows defender because if you are not sure what you are doing then i would want you keep it turned on however if you are sure what you are doing then it's really great to disable it like I personally on my gaming PC, I disabled this for performance data. Let me show you what I mean by that. If you go to the task manager and then go all the way here, as you can see here, this uh, Windows Defender most of the time would be running using your resources, CPU, and at the same time RAM, which is really annoying for the system. And also for a performance reason, as you can see here, it's using my cpu and ram like it constantly like when you turn on application it would be running in the background so let's try to disable it now again i just want to give you a disclaimer if you are sure what you're doing because when you disable this your system would become really vulnerable to the viruses but if you are not connecting external usbs are not downloading any malicious software then you don't have to worry about this anyway so what we would do here is go to the browser and open up this link which is the sordom.org. The link will be in the description. What you want to do here is simply download this. Now, since I have already downloaded it, it is on my desktop. I would go to the desktop and then simply open it. Now, this file has a password, by the way. So, as you can see here on the official website, it's saying it has the password sordom. Let's copy it from here and then paste it here and hit OK. Anyway, so once you paste it here, it's going to open up this folder we can then use this however first of all you're gonna have to disable windows defender otherwise if you try to open it it's gonna detect it as a malware so what you would do here is go to defender and then go to the virus and threat protection and then go to manage setting and simply disable this now once you turn off the real-time protection then you can open up this file it should be easy for you just simply select this and click extract to let me just extract it on a desktop and then if i go back to the desktop i can simply open this file and then click on more info and then click run anywhere now it's if it gives you usc let's hit yes and then click on disable windows defender and hit yes again now if it's asking for a permission just simply uncheck all those temper protection and then again try it now for some reason the again the windows defender can't have detected as a malware what we can do for since our uh, defender is already disabled what we can do is simply go back and then simply turn on this and paste the password from clipboard by control v and then again just simply drag it here disable windows defender and that's it we are good to go now let me show you what would happen if i try to show you the defender now again of course if you would like to enable this you can again open the same uh d control from the sodom and enable it from here like it's not a destructive method it is non-destructive you can restore it back if you would want to make it enable again windows defender but anyway um that's it for this if i go back to the task manager again and show you like your system should be easy now tip number four debloating windows now as i mentioned in the beginning trying to disable all the features like we did what we could that manually however 
there is some certain services that are running in the background that we can just simply disable it. But we can disable it, but it's going to take hours and hours. So there is a script made by Chris. Shout out to Chris for creating this. And it allows you to deploy to our whole Windows system and disable the Windows necessary feature for Windows 11. Now what you want to do here is go to this URL. The link will be in the description. And then simply copy this here. So what you want to do here is go to start menu and type here terminal and then run this as administrator and then simply right click here since we already copied it to the clipboard and then it should start working and then simply hit enter now it's gonna take a few seconds to install some of the plugins from the internet now once that is done you would see here this kind of UI now what you want to do here is go to the Twix here now I click on the laptops. Now when you select these laptops, it's gonna tailor the whole debloating experience for a laptop. But if you're using her a desktop, then you would click this. This is completely normal. Like debloating windows is really make your performance a lot faster. So since I'm using her a laptop, I would select this. And then what you would do here is simply click on the run Twix. Now, when you open up here terminal again, as you can see here, it's doing the magic and disabling all the unnecessary registry features and group policy that oftentimes we don't need it just for the performance reason. Now, once that is done here, what you want to do here is simply close the terminal and also close the windows, which unfortunately close itself automatically. So once you're done with it, what you want to do here is click on the start menu and just simply restart it. So I think that's it for this video. I hope you guys learned something from this video. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. If you like my overall content, feel free to subscribe to my channel and bring the bell notification for more upcoming videos. Anyway, so I think I will see you in the next video. Peace out.